Good afternoon, everybody. I'm certainly happy to be here this afternoon and certainly pleased to uh, introduce again or present again um, uh, Mario Reed. Um, uh, again, he's a native of southern suburbs of Chicago, earned his Bachelor of Arts with honors in journalism from Columbia College before receiving his Juris Doctor from the John Marshall Law School. Presently, he's the owner of the law offices of Mario A. Reed, where he assists clients with planning their affairs, buying and selling property, completing the probate process, creating and sustaining their businesses. He is extremely, extremely, extremely passionate about community education and outreach, conducts several different workshops regarding a variety of topics throughout the Cook County area. Mario believes that if people know better, they will do better. So without further ado, my friend and somebody I'm passionate about, Mario Reed. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Clerk Yarbrough. And greatest of afternoons to each and everyone on the call day. So thanks again to Clerk Yarbrough and the Maywood Rotary, as well as the Proviso Rotary, for the opportunity to present on today's topic. So we're going to dive right in because I want to make sure that we have plenty of time to take all questions. So I am very thankful to the staff. I believe Frank and Cody have ensure that I'll be able to screen share. So thank you all for that, as I am now screen sharing. And we're going to start right from the beginning. So today we are going to be talking about property fraud prevention. And that specifically relates to protecting your home from recording fraud and more. So one of the things, and I'm very grateful to have spent a considerable amount of time with the recorder of deeds office and now Clerk Yarbrough, I had the opportunity to see firsthand what recording fraud looks like and played an integral role in hopefully trying to stop that. But as most people know, fraud does not stop and wait for anyone. And it continues and it marches on because as long as there's something to take, somebody's going to try and take it. So we're going to be looking at how do you know that you own your home? So whenever it is that we ask this question, we get a lot of different answers. And a lot of those answers relate to things that most people think. So in my case, I have this home here in South Holland, Illinois. And the question is, how do I know that I own this home? What is it that ensures that I'm the owner? Well, one of the first things that most people are going to say is, do you have a deed? Well, that is correct. I did have a deed and it was executed back in 2015. But that's not the way that you know that you're the owner. Some people will say I pay a mortgage and that is correct. I do have a mortgage on the property, but that's not the way that I know that I own the home. Some people will say, well, I'm paying the tax bill and the tax bill shows my name, but the tax bill being in your name does not ensure that you're the owner. Others will say I have the keys to the house, but even having the keys to the house does not mean that you're the owner. So none of those items ensures that you're the owner of the property. The only way that you can be sure that you own your property is that you have to go to the website of cookcountyclerkil.gov. Now we're going to see a very short video that explains why all of those other things still doesn't mean that you own your house and how easy it is for people to steal your home. And a fee anyone can pay forty dollars.
Can't hear, Bob. Can't hear. So, yeah, it appears as if, though, not everyone can hear. So I'm going to keep moving. And the moral of that video is that people steal other people's homes. And it is very easy for individuals to do this. One of the things that most people are unaware of is that in order for someone to steal your home, all they have to do is go to Microsoft Word and type up the deed that says, out of the goodness of your heart, you gave your house to them. They then take that deed into the local bank or local currency exchange and have it notarized. And then they submit that deed to the Cook County Clerk's Office, give a $98 recording fee, and they have just stolen your home. It is that simple. They prepare a deed, have it notarized, and then record that deed. They then wait for you to leave and head on a trip down to, for instance, Columbia, Missouri. And while you're away, they break into the house, they change the locks, and they now own your home on paper and physically in possession. That is how easy it is for anyone to steal your home in not only Cook County, but throughout the state of Illinois because of the fact that we have an open recording system. So in order to ensure that your house has not already been stolen and that you're still the owner of your property, you have to review your property's chain of title. And that chain of title is what's known as the collection of all of the documents which have been recorded against your property dating back to when that property first came into existence. Here in Cook County, you have the opportunity to review your property's chain of title dating back to October 1st of 1985 online via the clerk's website. Now, a lot of people say, well, what documents are in my property's chain of title? Well, you have good documents and you have bad documents, like with everything. Those good documents are going to typically be your deed. So the deed is the document which indicates that you're the owner of the property based on the date in which that deed was recorded. Another good document is satisfaction or the release of the mortgage. Once you've paid off your mortgage, at that time, the mortgage company has an obligation to send out the release or satisfaction of mortgage. And then, although some people don't think that it's a good document, but the mortgage is a good document because that meant that you had money in exchange for the property. And that's a good thing because it shows that there's some equity in that property ideal. Now, some documents that you don't want to see in your property chain of title is specifically the mechanics lien. This is a document that a lot of fraudsters use to scam individuals, especially older individuals, out of money. Some other documents that you don't want to see include a list pendants. That list pendants means that your property is currently involved in pending litigation. And if your property is involved in pending litigation, bad things could happen, including a final judgment which says that you owe somebody else money for whatever reason it is, whether it's the bank, whether it's a contractor, or whether it's a neighbor or anyone. 
So those are some of the good docs and the bad documents that are in your property chain of title. And how you find out what documents are there is you have to go and get your pin. So the first step is you need that property index number. And for most of us, we're aware that you can find it on your property tax bill. So right up top on your property tax bill, you'll see your pin. Now, in the event that you don't have a property tax bill lying around, you can always go to the website of Cook County Property Info. Dot com. That's what's called the Cook County Property Tax Portal. So as an alternative to looking at your tax bill, just go right to cookcountypropertyinfo.com, type in your address, and it will provide you with your 14-digit property identification number. Once you have that property index number, you're then going to go to the clerk's website. So that's cookcountyclerkil.gov. Once you go to that website, you're then going to select recordings. So right in the right hand column, you'll see that tab that says recordings. By law. Once you selected that, it's then going to give you a screen that looks like this. And then you're going to select where it says search recordings. That's going to be the tab that's on the farthest left hand corner with the magnifying glass. Once you select search recordings, it's then going to bring up a screen that looks like this. And you'll know that you're at the right destination because you'll see the lovely Karen A. Yarbrough in the left-hand corner with her fuchsia jacket on. Now, it's going to give you two different options. You can select the 2020 search site or the Onyx search site. Either one will allow you to view your property's records. But it's a little bit easier to read the 2020 search site. So you'll click on where it says 2020 search site. And then it's going to bring up this screen. And this is where it's asking for your 14-digit property identification number, right up top. You're going to fill in the boxes right at the top and then click search, at which point it is going to bring up your property's chain of title. This is my home's chain of title. You'll notice that it has lots of documents. So up top it says release, then it says mortgage, then release, then mortgage, then release. That's because I've refinanced my home now four times since I bought it in 2015. It is extremely important that you make sure that anytime you refinance your home, that the mortgage company that got paid off recorded a release against your property's records. I cannot tell you how frequently we run into issues where people decide they want to sell their home and then we're unable to close on the property because they never got their mortgages that were refinanced released. And then the bank that had the mortgage went out of business before they recorded the release. So you want to go and check to make sure that any time that you paid off a mortgage, whether it was because you paid it off over the 30 year period, or it was because you refinanced that the bank sent the release to be recorded. But for purposes of making sure that you still own your home, you're going to go to the most recently recorded deed. It doesn't matter what type of deed it is. It can say trustee's deed like mine does, or it can say warranty deed or quick claim deed, or it can say judicial deed. Doesn't matter what type it is. You're just looking for the most recently recorded deed. In my case, the most recently recorded deed was from July 1st of 2015. Once you found that deed, you then want to click on it. And by clicking on it, it's going to bring up all of the information associated with that deed. It's going to show you the grantors. It's going to show you the grantee. It's also going to show when the deed was executed and when the deed was recorded. It is imperative that you make sure that your name is listed as the grantee. If your name isn't listed as the grantee, that means that somebody else has already stolen your home and you want to contact the Cook County Clerk's Office's fraud unit as soon as possible so as to help you get your home back. Now, after you've reviewed that information, you can then go a step further and you can click on where it says view images right up top. That's going to allow you to view the actual deed itself. This is important because sometimes 
And I know it's really hard to believe, but every now and again, even the clerk's office makes a mistake and they put down the wrong name as the grantee and it doesn't match with what the deed says. So if you go in and see that it says that your name isn't the grantee, but you're confident that your name should be, you can click on the deed and that will enable you to view the actual deed. And if it turns out that there was a human error mistake where the indexing department put the wrong name as the grantee, again, you can reach out to the clerk's office and ask that they update the record to reflect the proper information for your deed. But this is how you verify that you own your house. It's not a case where you can just rely on the deed because if someone else has recorded a more recent deed and you were unaware of it, that person is legally the owner of the property. Now, it might be because of fraud, but in order to prove that it's fraud, you're going to need to work with the clerk's office's fraud unit in order to have that adjusted. So this is the process for checking your home's chain of title and making sure that you're still the owner of your property. Because as I mentioned, it's very easy for someone to type up a deed, go and get it notarized, and then submit it to the clerk's office to steal your home. In order to ensure that that hasn't happened, you have to check your records. Our office recommends that you check your records at least twice a year. And the easiest way to remember that is whenever you pay your tax bill, check your records to make sure that you're still the owner of that house that you're paying taxes on. So every March and every August, just log in, check your records, and make sure that you're still the owner. You also want to make sure that there have been no more recently fraudulent recorded documents. In this case, when you look at the property's chain of title, you're going to see a lot of different documents. You'll see mortgages, you'll see releases, you'll see a deed in trust, a trustee's deed. You might also see documents that say judgment or order or list pendants. All of those documents impact your property's records and your property's legal standing. And the only way to find out as to what's there is you have to go and look. A lot of people think that the clerk's office is in a position to be able to prevent people from recording fraudulent documents against your property. That's not how our system works in the state of Illinois and in most states across the country. We have what's called an open recording system. And that means that anybody can record anything against any property at any time. The clerk's office is there to do the recording. And they're going to accept the document, make sure that it has whatever information is necessary for that document. But whether it's legitimate or it's fraudulent, they have an affirmative obligation to record that document. So because of that, it's imperative that you know what records are in your property's chain of title. Now I'm going to pause here because I think we might have a few questions. Let's see. Okay, someone for... Uh, so contact the notary listed on the deed in case someone forged your signature on a deed. So a lot of times people think, oh, we can contact the notary. The notary is simply verifying the signature on the deed. If it turns out that that signature was taken from a previous document, then the notary is not going to have a way to verify yay or nay for that signature. One of the things that, again, a lot of people are unaware of is that our signatures are on these documents are part of the public record. So I can go and I can obtain anyone's signature from their mortgage on a property that was recently recorded. So the signature may, in fact, be the legitimate signature of you, the owner. However, you didn't sign that document, and that's what makes it fraudulent. So the notary public, in this instance, if it wasn't signed in front of them, technically they're not supposed to be notarizing. But as most of us are well aware, unfortunately, there are a lot of bad people out there, including notaries, who are more than happy to take 30 or $50 to notarize anything. And oftentimes they notarize documents before 
the signature has even been placed on the document. So going through the hassle of contacting the notary, while it's an option, it likely won't return the kind of results that you need and you're interested in. During my five years with the, the Recorder of Deeds Office as the head of the fraud unit, I saw hundreds of documents where the notary confirmed and said, yep, I notarized the document, but it was still fraudulent. So unfortunately, contacting the notary isn't necessarily going to yield the kind of results that are ideal. What has to happen is, is that we, there's a process that the clerk's office has put in place that enables them to go before an administrative law judge and then get that document nullified. And it's something in which everyone who owns property in Cook County should be very thankful for. Because in other counties, if this were to happen to you, you would have to hire an attorney and go through a process that's called a claim to quiet title. Thankfully, at the time, Recorder Yarbrough lobbied the legislature down in Springfield to implement this process that's called the Fraud Referring Review. So only, or not only, but primarily in Cook County, there's this opportunity to avoid the hassle of incurring additional expense after you've already been victimized. Now, I see also watch for your property tax bill twice a year, same days each year. When you don't receive a property tax bill, you're not relieved of the obligation. That's 100% correct. The Illinois Property Tax Code says that if you're the owner of the property, you have the responsibility and the obligation to make sure that the taxes are being paid, even if you're not receiving the, the bill. So going to that tax portal, cookcountypropertyinfo.com, and checking your records every March and every August will help ensure that the tax bill is being sent to you as opposed to someone else. So that's a great, great point. Now, in getting back to the property chain of title, you're going to go to the records and you're going to check those documents. If there's any document that's showing up in your property's records that you are unaware of, you need to reach out to the clerk's office so as to find out what that document is all about. You can view the image to make sure as to what that document is. You can see the physical document that was recorded. If after reviewing the physical document, you still have no clue, then you'll want to work with the clerk's property fraud unit to ensure that someone isn't doing fraud against your property. In order to make sure that you're still the owner, your name has to show up in the column of the first grantee for the most recently recorded deed. That's the only way that you can be sure that you're still the owner of the property. Because even though I know that I bought the property back in 2015, and there's a deed, and I have that deed, if by chance someone else has recorded a more recently recorded deed in my property's records, that then would make them the owner, and I would need to find out about that in order to do something. So you can't rely on the fact that you have the deed in a drawer or a shoebox at the back of the closet. You have to consistently check the records to make sure that someone hasn't stolen your property. Now, thankfully, there's another way that you can protect yourself. And I'm going to pause quickly to see if there are any questions. So the question is, in Cook County, how many days after the due date can a property be auctioned for non-payment? So the answer to that question is it's going to depend on the circumstances. There are a couple different ways that someone can purchase property taxes. So there's what's called the scavenger sale as well as the annual sale. So depending upon where we're at in the timetable, that's going to determine how those taxes can be sold versus when the property's taxes can be auctioned off. How many days after the sale of your property can you still purchase your property back? Again, that's it's going to be very case specific. Thankfully, in Cook County, you have to be made aware as to what the redemption period is. So again, that's through the Cook County Clerk's Office, the Real Estate and Tax Services Division, room 434 in City Hall. If there's ever a concern as it relates to the timetable for your property taxes, 
you would want to contact the Cook County Clerk's Office's Real Estate and Tax Services Division on the fourth floor immediately. So that way you know exactly where you stand on those property taxes. You can also go online to the clerk's website and you can research that information via the Real Estate and Tax Services tab plug in your PIN, and it'll provide you with that information. So that is available. Now, as it relates to protecting your property, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the clerk's website, and then you're going to click on the tab that says Property Fraud Unit. That's the one that has the gavel right there next to where it says Search Recordings. This time, you're going to select Property Fraud Unit. Once you've selected that, it's then going to give you the option to sign up for what is called the Free Property Fraud Alert Service. This is a free service that Karen Yarbrough's office has made available to all property owners throughout Cook County. And all you have to do is register your property. You simply go to this screen and you fill in the blanks of that information. It's going to ask for your, your name. It's going to ask for the PIN number of the property. It's going to ask for your email address, and it's going to ask for your phone number. Now, one of the things that you want to be sure to do is select how you wish to be contacted. Because how this service works is that anytime that a new document gets recorded against your property, you're going to receive an email and or a phone call telling you that that new document was recorded. That then enables you to go to the clerk's website and view what that document was. If it's a document that should have been recorded, then you have nothing to be concerned about. But if it turns out that it's doc a document that should not have been recorded, you'll then want to contact the fraud unit so as to have them get involved and ideally address whatever that fraudulent document was. When signing up for the fraud alert, you're going to need to select your preferred contact method. You can choose email or phone. Once you've chosen email or phone, it's then going to give you a confirmation that says you have successfully subscribed to the Cook County Clerk's Office Fraud Alert System. And it's going to tell you how you've registered. In my case, I selected email first. After it gives you this screen, Instead of having to go all the way back to the beginning and do it all over again, you can just hit the back arrow in your browser and then it will take you back to the previous screen and then you can select phone as opposed to email. And then it'll give you another confirmation telling you that you're now subscribed with your phone number as well as with your email address. By doing this, any time that any document gets recorded against your property, you will now receive a phone call and an email letting you know that that document was recorded. If the document should not have been recorded, that's when you'll want to contact the clerk's office so that they can assist in helping you get that document nullified all at no cost to you. It is 100% free. All you have to do is sign up and then take advantage of the information as it's being sent to you. So that way, you then don't have to always go back and check your records because you'll be notified anytime that a new document gets recorded against your property. And once again, it is a 100% free service through the Cook County Clerk's Office. Now I'm going to pause to see if there are any questions. Are there any questions out there? Okay, looks like no questions. Now, one of the things that I also like to talk about as it relates to property fraud, and this isn't the recording side of it, but this is after you've recorded a document. Whenever it is that you record a document, such as a transfer on death instrument, like what was discussed last week, or if you move your property into a trust, or even if you do any other type of transaction with your property, even though you initiated that transaction, there are scam companies that are called deed resellers. And what they do is they scour the public record and they wait to see any type of change in ownership. 
So if you change the name of the deed because you got married, or if you add a spouse, or you take somebody off, whenever they see that there's been a change in the ownership of any type, including with the transfer on that instrument, they'll send out a letter that looks something like this. And it'll have what they consider to be some official company name, such as National Deed Service or National Deed Providers, some nonsense name. And it will say, our records show that the property deed, and they'll have the document number, they'll have the date, they'll have the names of the individual. And they'll say that in order to get a certified copy of your deed, you need to send them $50 or $100 or $150. And what they're doing is they're preying on the fact that most people don't know how you can go about getting your deed after it's been recorded. If you take your deed into the clerk's office and record it yourself, you walk out with that deed the same day. So you don't need a certified copy because you have the original. And you'll know that you have the original because it'll have that recorded stamp or that clerk stamp in the top right-hand corner. However, these companies are looking to take advantage of you. And they're sending this out in hopes that you won't know that you already have the document and they'll and you'll think that you need to send them money in order to get that document. What will happen is, is you'll send them a check for $90 or $120, they'll cash it and they'll never send you anything. And then when you report them to the Attorney General's office or the Better Business Bureau, they'll just close down that business and start a brand new one and begin doing it all over again. So deed resellers are a very, very prominent and ubiquitous scam company or scam industry where they take advantage of the fact that most people have no clue about how to go about getting their deed. If you don't know where your original deed is, you can go to the clerk's office or the clerk's website and you can order a certified copy of your deed or a non-certified copy. If you are doing something where you have to prove your ownership, that's when you need a certified copy. If you just want to have a copy for yourself, you can then go with a non-certified copy. But in either case, you don't need to go through a reseller. You can go directly to the clerk's office, and it's much less expensive than sending $100 to some scam company in Northbrook that's never going to send you anything anyhow. Any questions about the deed resellers? Okay. So that's all it is that I have as it relates to the recording fraud and protecting your home. I am very hopeful that every property owner in Cook County signs up for the free property fraud alert service. You can go on to the clerk's website and register your property. It's not just for residential. If you have commercial property or vacant property, you can register those as well. And it's to your advantage to register those properties so that that way you know exactly what's going on with them at all times. It is 100% free and it costs you nothing to be notified and to take advantage of the fraud unit services as well. So again, I'd like to say thank you for inviting us. We greatly appreciate it. Here is our firm's information. So if you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to us, as well as contact the clerk's office direct as well. So um, Attorney Reed, um, in, in your presentation, the video that you showed, we didn't have audio. Is it possible for you to go back to that video? Because I think it has really strong import on this problem, okay? Um, and and show us, you, you know what, you know which one I'm talking about, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you're getting back there. Just for your information, Madam Clerk, uh, Cody went ahead and put a link to that video as well, if anyone would like to watch after the okay. presentation. Okay, he's going to show it now, again. Yeah, so I'm going to try and see if the audio will play on everyone else's end. Are you all able to hear the audio? Faintly. Not at all now. 
Okay. Um, so you know what? That link, what we can try is I can try playing from that link and then see if it works. So uh, Frank, you put it in the chat group? Uh, yes, I just put it in there again. It should be the most recent one at 113. All right, so we're going to try this, and we'll see if this works. So, in one second, I'm going to share the screen to this and see if everyone can hear it better that way. Is the audio better now? No. Yeah, it looks like technology is not cooperating with us. I noticed uh, if I turn the volume up on my computer, you can hear a little bit better. Okay. Well, it's I think it's imperative that people see this video because it really encapsulates the problem and how... Um, you know, and this has happened to someone that's a prominent uh, former elected official. It happened to her, and she's in this video. So I, I would just really like people to take a look at this video so that they can can see exactly what happened to her. And um, I, I when well, actually when I first became recorder of deeds um, prior to that, she had reached out to me and told me what happened to her that someone had stolen her home on paper and she just didn't understand how that could happen but it happened to her and we actually um, went across the country talking to uh, groups of people to talk about this issue many of the recorder deeds throughout the United States actually employed the uh, idea of uh, setting up the property fraud alert program for their constituents as well Mario? Yes, and it's the case where, yes. Just a, a, another uh, comment and then a question. The comment would be, we had our property sold at auction uh, in the first uh, six months of ownership because we our tax due date came up. We thought we had escrowed the money through our attorney and the closing. It wasn't escrowed and they sent the bill to the new owner of our previous home instead of to where we lived. And uh, then there's that grace period, so we got it back. But we've had that that experience, which isn't very pleasant. Um, I wonder if there's another way to lose your property, and I wonder if you could speak to Illinois law associated with adverse possession. Yes. So adverse possession is a, a really unique legal concept that exists not just in the state of Illinois, but across the country. And it stems from the social policy that we want people to use their property. We don't just want property sitting vacant. We want for individuals to take care of property. And in the state of Illinois, adverse possession means that if someone starts using your property, and it could be as simple as if your neighbor decides to plant a garden on 100 feet of your property line, if they plant that garden and then they take care of that garden over an extended period of time and you see them using that garden and you never tell them, hey, stop using that garden on my property, eventually they can apply for what's called adverse possession. Now, one of the other ways that someone can adversely possess property in the state of Illinois is if they pay seven years worth of property taxes under what's called proper color of title, they can then acquire your property by having paid the taxes for seven years. Now, in my opinion, if someone's paying the property taxes for seven years, they deserve that property because they've been taking care of the responsibility. But in speaking to your point, if you didn't know that the property taxes were supposed to be paid because the bill wasn't coming to you, at that point, that's when it gets a little bit murky. But adverse possession is a legal theory and concept here in the state of Illinois. And in order to adversely possess for the property boundary, such as having a garden, it has to be 21 years. 
So it's an extended period of time. So it's not like it's going to happen overnight. But let's say that if the owner was unaware that that was their property line because they never got the platter survey and they just always thought that it belonged to the other owner, not knowing what your property line consists of is not a defense to adverse possession. One of the other things is, is when it comes to adverse possession, there's a legal concept which is called tacking. So what that means is if one owner owned the property for 10 years and they use that garden and then they sell the property to somebody else who comes in and for another 11 years uses that same garden, even though the new owner only had the garden for 11 years, they can use the 10 years from the previous owner as part of the 21 year period of time because of tacking. They can tack on with what the previous owner had. So adverse possession is something that does exist. It's not that common, but it does happen. And there's a litany of cases that you can find online to see just how interesting those stories are. Maybe a follow-up question then. If, some, if my neighbor, for instance, would um, file a new survey that would include three feet of my property. I think I read in a law book once uh, someone just mowed the grass on their side of the neighbor's driveway up to the driveway for the convenience of both and then ended up owning that property all the way to the driveway. But if a survey is filed with Cook County that includes a portion of your property, now they may have over, overlapping surveys as a matter of record. How is that resolved? So that's a great question, and you're right. It can be something as simple as just mowing the lawn. And it's a case where people have to be very aware as to what's going on. Just because somebody says they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart doesn't mean it's going to end there. So if you don't want the risk of somebody trying to take property that belongs to you, you have to say to your neighbor, hey, I'm not okay with you mowing the lawn. And if you are going to mow the lawn, you need to come and check with me so that that way I can decide if that's going to be it. Now, as it relates to the surveys, another misconception that's out there is that most residential properties do not have surveys filed with the Cook County Clerk's Office or previously the Recorder of Deeds Office. Residential real property surveys don't get filed with that office. They're only given to the owner who pays for the survey. So the county, 99 out of 100 times, doesn't have a record as to the plat of survey. The county only has the legal description. Now, the legal description is what the surveyor uses to prepare the survey, but the county themselves, they don't actually have that plat of survey. It never actually gets filed with the clerk's office. It's only in instances typically of condos or commercial properties that the plot of survey actually gets filed with the county. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, there was one question Oh, from Karen Thompson. She was asking the question. Um, was she able to get her property back? She was able to get her property back, but um, she paid uh, an attorney. She was out of several thousand dollars to get it, you know, uh, put back in her name. So she, she's not enamored about what happened to her. She's very unhappy about her having to go through all that trouble. And quite frankly, that, that situation happened because um, of... Um, these, uh, you talk about fraudsters, we haven't even gotten into sovereign citizens. That's who did that to her. So we, we may have Mario come back again sometime to talk about the, those particular culprits and his work in trying to pull a cover off of these uh, bad actors and some of these signs that you see out here, call this number, you know, uh, pay a dollar for, I mean, all kinds of stuff. There's just, there's a lot out there. And what you don't know can hurt you. Um, I see in, in the uh, chat, uh, Amanda saying that she can play the video if Frank makes her the host. 
um, Frank, could you do that? And let's see if sure. Armanda can do it. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, you give it a go. All Mario would have to do is select same as system on his microphone when he's screen sharing. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm sure he does. <laughs> okay, whatever that means. So, so what is it? Way, you, Frank? What's that? Nope. So it shows Armanda is now the host. Yep. Okay. And All if right, you Armanda, that. work your magic. Mm-hmm. Okay, give me a second here. Nice suit coat. Look at that. Yeah, I would just want to let him know what size I wear. <laughs> We'll make sure to get you the perfect size for you. <laughs> is that the new rotary apparel that we were speaking of? I think it is. I think it is. It, it does look kind of rotary-like from a distance. How are we doing there, Amanda? Okay, I am. Um, I still don't see all of the features, so I'm wondering if if Cody is still okay. We're the main host, so you have all the features. Okay, I'm gonna try this. I don't see the the because there are features to turn the video on, um, and I'm not seeing those features okay that would be on the mute button the arrow if you could just select same as system from select okay I, okay hold on I just okay okay here we go let's see what this does it is a line anyone can stand in and a fee can you hear it can yes $40 is all it takes to get a deed or other document officially recorded in Cook County. A simple perk of open government openly abused by serious scammers. I think they call them, you know, financial parasites. She was new to her office as recorder of deeds when Karen Yarbrough says she first spotted the trouble. To steal a home, all you have to do is doctor some paperwork up and Photoshop it, bring it to the recorder's office, record it, voila, you own a home. Con artists exploiting a system that relies on the honesty of those who use it, recording forged documents in order to steal a home outright. Sound far-fetched? This is a kind of crime that I never imagined that could happen. It did to Chicago Treasurer Stephanie Neely until it happened to her. I get this call, I'm like, what do you mean someone has taken, changed the name on my deed? What, what do you mean? How do they do that? In her case, a stranger recorded a fraudulent deed, waited until she was at work, and then changed the lock. They want to physically be in your house. Because once they're there, it's very difficult to get them out. Precisely what happened to this Chicago woman. This individual had paperwork that uh, was Xerox that showed the deed was in his name. She asked us to conceal her identity because... You're in constant fear that they will try something next because believe it or not they did come back three days later one man connected to her case was arrested and convicted as the recorder's office continued to field fake documents i decided that i couldn't sit idly by and watch this happen yarborough brought in this man they believe that the government created artificial duplicates of all of us an expert on sovereign citizens, the extreme anti-government movement often behind this crime. They believe they can completely ignore our government and do whatever they want to do with impunity. Pete Cabbage calls it paper terrorism and teaches the red flags, like the punctuation sovereigns add in the middle of names, the refusal to use mainstream addresses or zip codes, and how they employ lengthy, arcane terms. The flurry of documents they file may be fake, but their threat is real. They're bullies. They're brazen. They think that nothing can touch them. A lot of times they'll come in and overwhelm our frontline staff. You know, it may be 20 of them will come in. Yarborough has a catchy comparison she uses to get a non-believer's attention. In Illinois, it is easier to steal a home than it is to steal a car. It's fraud and, you know, they're taking people's homes. 
So there is now a simple way for some homeowners to protect themselves, the free property fraud alert system. You load your property index number, then you get an alert if any document is recorded in connection with your property. Counties across the country are now turning to this kind of system as these cases of mortgage and property fraud continue to grow. Lisa Parker, NBC5, investigates. There we go. So I hope that hits home for people how easy it is to steal a home. And I hope also, more than anything else, I hope that you would uh, take advantage of the uh, free property fraud alert uh, program that we have in the clerk's office. Um, Attorney Reed has made it very clear how to get there, what to do, and I want to thank him once again for sharing with um, our audience on uh, how you can protect yourself. You are your best protector and you are the person that can really make it happen. You can do it yourself. So with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor. Well, thank you very much, Karen and Mario. What a wonderful job. So relevant and again, so excellent. Um, I would look forward to your next presentation. And thank you, Armanda, too, for um, um, ironing out the technical difficulties with the video. That's a good video. And um, we had uh, some good discussion, a lot of business. I think there's a, a lot of activity going on in our club, two new committees that are uh, getting rolling here where we're going to have, I think, a lot of uh, hands-on, boots-on-the-ground special services to our community. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here, especially our guests today. Uh, we've run out of time. And I will officially adjourn our meeting at 129, as I say, please sign up for Saturday morning, 9 a.m. behind the police station in Maywood for Village Pride, Village Wide. Thank you. God bless you all.